apparently the first review for the White Claw, or initial review for the White Claw, is a thumbs down. <laughs> so far. Yeah. Or her first impressions video. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to turn it. everybody. We're back around again today to bring you some more entertainment in the rambling kind. Uh, today, carrying my... Bark River Vortex, because just got back from a wonderful weekend out in the forest. That is a good knife to have with you in the forest, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Yeah. Some nice little <clears throat> red spacers in there as well. A2? Yeah. Yeah. Did up a patina on this guy. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. I was also in the forest as well. So I actually had my JS6 this weekend. I brought it out as a small little feather sticking paracord cutting. It was a good time. Along with yes. whatever. A couple other yeah, things. But, yeah. So and uh this week I'm rocking uh big red SR uh, SR1 D2 integral goodness. It's a good time. From lying feel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Inconsequential details. Yeah. I uh I am carrying the CRKT psych. The recently discontinued CRKT psych. They made this knife for about six months? Seven months? Something, yeah. It's discontinued already. It's uh <laughs> it's gone. On that note. Uh, on their discontinued page, they said, on further review by our engineering team, the production of this specific model has not met our high standards of performance. <laughs> Therefore, we have discontinued the site model uh, 7421. And to be directly honest, Nigel, that's the exact reaction I had when I read that part of the statement <laughs> as well. Just, <laughs> all right. <Nice. laughs> Just keep telling yourself that. Um, yeah. I needed a glide lock in my in my life. I thought it would be something I would purchase maybe further down the line as kind of a, eh, why not? But mm. as soon as I saw it was discontinued, I'm like, no, I'm not going to wait. Yeah. I'm going to buy it now. As far as I can tell, um, my guess as to why they discontinued it, they've designed this guy so that you're supposed to press down the button before you can move the mm-hmm. slider. That little notch is what catches the rest of that there. Yeah. Um, it is difficult, but you can actually, with one hand even, pop that guy. Hmm. So it's fair not enough. super secure. And to be fair, the yeah. old the old iteration of the glide lock didn't even have that button to begin with, so I'm not all that concerned, but <laughs> apparently CRKT had enough of a problem with it that they just <laughs> decided that they was enough. They disliked the original so much that they changed it, added a button, and then said, no, no, that button's not good enough. We'll discontinue this knife. Yeah. How many people I talked to that wanted that knife to be assisted? So re-release the design with a flipper tab and uh, make it assisted, and you'd sell it yeah. out of them. I bet the enough. flipper tab in the little the triangle points. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how they could do the glide lock and have it be assisted at the same time, just because... No, no, it wouldn't be a glide lock anymore. Just make it a flipper. Yeah, I still don't like that. <laughs> 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 Honestly, I have one major modification I'm planning to do to this or to a second one that I may or may not buy. I'm going to grind off these tabs and just have it be straight because Fair this enough. is actually fine as a front flipper sort of deployment. It doesn't need those mm-hmm. at all. And it kind of sucks having that sit in your pocket and just like, hey, one flipper tab's not bad enough. How about four? And they don't do anything. <laughs> it's, it's a little irritating. Yeah. They're just there to poke you. Pretty much, yeah. Dirty. Just a quick shout out to uh, Darren and Zing CDC. What's going on, guys? Welcome Good back, day, guys. Uh, what, what are you guys carrying in your pockets tonight? Actually. We're going here first. We're going to start here. Alrighty. Paul has a plan, apparently. Kind of. I, apparently. It, it is. <laughs> that plan is... I don't is buy it, I don't buy it at all. Um, so this section is, uh, I guess, sponsored by The Cutting Edge, because uh, we got a new offering from them. The, mm. uh, 
uh, what's it called? The mini Super Freak S90 carbon fiber penis clip. I don't know if you can see the dick clip, but it is a wiener. <laughs> yep. I don't know why they didn't put the bug out clip on that one. Yeah, I was thinking the exact yeah, same thing. Exactly. Uh, in fact, if there is one complaint about this knife, is that the back of this clip is kind of a hot spot. Hmm. Which Fair enough. is kind of odd to say about Benchmade clips, even the penisy ones. They're generally not hmm. not all that hot spotty. No. It's just the only spot that I'm actually feeling is if I put my hand around it. Can you put that up against your full-size Griptilian? Uh, potentially. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go Let's look try and find it. <laughs> exactly. It's the best comparison that we've got out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah there. Okay. It's uh, not too bad. It's actually uh, not that far off from the full size. It's kind of like an in between the grip, the, the small griptilian and the large. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, um, uh, yeah, maybe like three eighths of an inch on the well on both ends. Yeah. Not. Uh, I don't know what I was gonna say there. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it's a sweet little knife. Excellent. And as far as S90 and carbon fiber goes, it's not as bad as other offerings cost-wise. It's all right. Like, yeah. <laughs> it comes There's in under suggested a retail is still three ten American. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's not cheap. I'm not. I'm not suggesting that. But I just mean it comes in under the the nine forty dash one. Not on suggested retail or very close to. I think. It's, Fair enough. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. pretty close to, but just because certain stores have competitive pricing doesn't mean that suggested <laughs> retail is still just a little <laughs> ridiculous on that one. Speaking of, if you're in Canada no, especially and you want a good deal, head over to Cutting Edge. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I do remember actually I looked into it and the suggested like the MSRP from Benchmade is fairly close. And the new Mini Super Freak actually weighs a little bit more, so you get the more materials for a little lower price. Because the 940-1 was the, <clears throat> excuse me, the more expensive one. Fair enough. Uh, so I'm, so I'm not a crazy person. Dollar per ounce. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So as far as like carbon fiber S90 from Benchmade, that's the range that they have offerings in like it's what they charge for at curious does it ha i haven't i have completely forgotten does it have full steel liners or is it just the uh the segmented liners it is just the segmented you can't really see that okay cool <laughs> um but yeah they it's really the, red standoffs it's the hard well on the it's carbon fiber on this one but the other one it's just the hard Baylox plastic with that VersaFlex overmold stuff, right? Yeah, for the original, not the so, super variants. Yeah. yeah, but it's still just the, the liners holding the access hit, lock in, and that's it. And I'm pretty sure yeah. they use the same frame on this. Yeah. It's just yeah. a solid slab this time instead, right? Mm -hmm. um, most definitely. <laughs> Darren's saying that he's carrying his tactical mace, and I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping that's his United Cutlery tactical mace with, like, the butt oh, it is. spikes on it. Yeah, yeah. For sure. The thumper. The I night watchman. You know. The night watchman, yes. <laughs> that, and Zinx that. is carrying his SE that I can't say the name of because it is a name with an X at the beginning of it. Zankudo. Evidently. Yeah, those things. Yep. And a SAC and a Gerber MP600 multiplier. Okay. Nice. I was going to say, Darren's uh, tactical mace is nastier than most knives I own. That's kind of surprising. Full review? These are gross. <laughs> <laughs> Full review. <laughs> That's it, hey? Oh, wow. Yeah, so good. That's too bad. Um, it, it's, it's like hint of a hint of grapefruit. <laughs> is it like that oh. joke of, uh, oh, what is that, Perrier? Where there's strawberry... LaCroix? La LaCroix, where their uh, strawberry flavored water tastes as if somebody shouted strawberry from another room when you're taking a sip of it. <laughs> like, that's the kind of flavor it has. Yeah, they have a flavor called shy watermelon. 
<laughs> you can't even I mean, taste they it. Know, but they should. <laughs> um, so you were half right, Dennis. We didn't bother bringing the, uh, the Luco tonight, um, but it's pretty cool. Nice. We, ha- we had other things that we had to get to. And those other things were the fact that I was actually able to salvage the questions from last week. Okay. Um, <laughs> so right off the hop, the, the question was, um, ask us about budget steel or budget knives, I should say. And I can't remember, did we answer Sheepdog 7's question about best budget steel? Yep. Yeah. We yeah, did? yeah, we did talk about that. I believe steel. so. Yeah, I gave kind of a smart assy answer, and then I gave an actual answer. Right. Um, the other question was, which budget knife is from actually Gear in Situ on Instagram. Um, which budget knife is actually rubbish? Um... Like, okay, so the question kind of frames it as, like, you would expect it to be good for a budget knife, but it's actually rubbish. Or um, people <laughs> describe it as a good budget knife, but people in the know are like, don't buy that. The Gerber uh, Bear Girls line, uh, I seem to remember them having a couple models that were around, like, 30 40 bucks. Um Very soft steels. If you were looking to use them as a work knife, they were just not ideal. Um Something so like, soft, in fact, that people find it difficult to break them. It took DBK two videos to break one of the Bear Grylls knives. Yeah. Well, that's really funny, because with the uh, brain out of his lineup, they actually got recalled because they were snapping just at the handle. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Oof, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's no bueno. No. No bueno at all. Actually rubbish. Yeah, that's an interesting way of phrasing it. I, I did appreciate the uh, the word usage, for sure. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Um, any of the like Z Hunter stuff. So, are we gonna kind of throw? <laughs> no, but I think I think that doesn't try to claim to be good. I think <laughs> what talking about is the budget knife that yeah. people somewhat like are still into, but yeah. is actually crap. My answer is the K bar dozer because yeah. I need it. I okay. hate it so much. Yep. It's gross. I was gonna go there too, yeah. I um can I be a little controversial and maybe say the rat one in Oz eight or the rat two in Oz eight? Because that's not a Okay, steel. so here's here's the thing though, like and same with the bear grills knife as well. <laughs> is yeah, they've got soft steel in them, but the lockups are solid on them. The cutting performance is good on them. Like it's the ergos are not bad on both of those knives, yeah. right? And, and that's why so just because it's the garbage steel. But then you like, but for me the dozer is like it's a garbage steel, but then it doesn't fit in my hand and it just pinches and it yeah like, yeah feels yeah. like it's gonna break as soon as you use it, right? So it's and what it I, doesn't. It, it's, it's yeah. I just mean, like, Oz-8 is really not a far cry, especially the way it's usually heat treated. It's not a far cry from 8CR. It's, that's kind of what I mean by controversial. Like, I like a lot of things about the rat. Okay, Joe, yeah. Joe, we're talking about budget knives. That's no, I know. the type of steel that budget knives use. No, I understand. <laughs> that's why they're budget knives. But at the, at the like, 80-ish dollar Canadian price point, I don't know. You... That's budget knives. <laughs> No, but I'm saying you can, you you can find a lot better for a lot cheaper too, and not just from the likes of Rook, but yeah. I'm gonna get controversial here. Probably people are probably not gonna agree with me. Um, I was gonna say the Buck 110 base model yeah. in the four the 420 HC. Well, and no matter yeah. their boss, he treats they're the best. It's the best 420 HC you'll get on the market for sure. But it weighs seven ounces and it doesn't have a pocket clip. Yeah, yeah. And it's not great steel. Um, you could also add in um, Swiss Army knives, in my opinion. Fair. A little okay. overhyped. I can understand where all of all of that is coming from, whether it's the Buck One Ten or whether it's the Swiss <laughs> Army, whether it's the Rat Folder. But all of those knives have a pretty good edge geometry. Yes. yes. Yeah. And they've got pretty good ergos on them as well. They fit pretty good in the hand, things like that, where there is some stuff out there. And, like, their builds are pretty good, too. Like, 
what's that stainless steel garbage piece of rake knife that you own, Joe? Like uh, that's a horrible that's, one that we all hate. Yeah, that that's what is that the eight, you could do? Is that the eight thirty eight thirty one or something? It was the uh, what was this? I think the eight thirty one's the good one. This is the no no, this is the eight sixty five. Damn well, you! I know, no, no, no. Dennis just said it was the good one. This is the good one, but this is the 865-B. I really wish they would name their knives so that I could remember what they're called instead of just pulling a ZT. Um, yeah. Terrible I... ergos on it. I mean, not bad as geometry, I guess, as well, yeah. but still. Like... The blade's decent. The handle's not fantastic. Can I see the yeah. brick? Sorry? Is the Grick acceptable? The cold steel grick. That it's, one was pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, it was I'd pretty. Say that's acceptable. It, <laughs> like it, it had interesting ideas and stuff like that, but I think it just ended up falling short. It wasn't the worst feel in hand, but for what you were paying for, yeah, it uh, hard to recommend it to people for sure. Like I would rather send you towards something like a a working man or something else. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. My kind of oh. jokey answer is the CRKT wrinkle. <laughs> and onion designed one. <laughs> it certainly is and, crappy. <laughs> and as far as like the points that is made against you guys, as far as like it's got good build, it's got good lockup, it's got decent edge geometry, like yeah, they're they all get checked off. But that thing was just bloody hideous. <laughs> For those of you out in uh, YouTube land who are not familiar, uh, it looks like a literal lump of poop. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a Ken Onion design as well? It looks Yep. I'd like to think he was just I don't know, he was getting back at somebody for something. <laughs> he chewed up a bunch of bubble gum and then spit it on the ground and was like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> There's that? something there. Yeah. Put a recurve on this and we're golden. Um, the other thing is too, we're seeing the prevalence of D2 in the budget world. Like, Civivi is using it more often. You're getting 9 CRs from, again, Civivi yeah. Art Artisan. Um, that sort of stuff, especially the overseas produced stuff, is getting more and more popular. So there's less room for competition, I guess. It it seems like a really saturated market, but there's there's always going to be more new designs coming in. So that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. It'll be interesting to see how many of those companies exist ten years from now, mm. or if some of them are flash in the pan and they they go out quick. Or if they get reabsorbed by a different company, like, yeah. you know, Rook getting picked up by um, Riat or We, or, and so they have, like, Kersha and ZT, where they were separate companies, and now a parent company owns them both, right? That's, co that, that's kind of a unique situation in the knife world, too, <laughs> right? Like, like I Kai. Think, What's that, I Dennis? I think we need to back that up a little bit. Kai started ZT well after they owned Kershaw. Okay. They were never separate. Co well, like to say ZT. they're separate companies is is a little bit weird. They ZT were never separate was, companies. That Kai I thought they were bought. the same company before, and people corrected me on that. So when they no, but they Kai didn't, didn't buy ZT. Kai yeah, started. ZT was yes. never its own. That wasn't explained to me back then, so mm. yeah. I didn't know that. I just Z knew that they were separate companies. I wasn't aware no, of that Kai either, to be honest. Kai started ZP to be a high-end Kershaw mm -hmm. after Kai bought Kershaw from some gentleman with the last name of Kershaw. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I didn't actually know that that was, that, uh, that Kai I was. That. I didn't know that Kai was the instigator for ZT's inception. So that's kind of neat. Um, yeah. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Zinks in chat has a question for us. What about budget knives that are actually good? <laughs> um, There's lots. There's lots out there. <laughs> most of uh, Rook's um, catalog, yeah. I would say. You, you can't go wrong with 12CR and 14CR, especially at the price point they're offering them. Um, uh, I would say choice. QSP has been really yeah. doing yeah. awesome stuff. That Penguin Warncliffe one that we almost all bit the trigger on, or yeah, hold the trigger, bit the trigger. I don't know. There's no. a, there was some biting involved. It's it's all right. Don't bite the trigger. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna pull the bullet and bite the trigger. It's 
Don't kink shame, Paul. No. <laughs> I'm gonna kink shame a little. I'm gonna kink shame in this in this case. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go as far as to say certain CRKT models are decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pillar, the pillar, in, it, the pillar in D2. Never mind the pillar in 8CR. Um, the pillar in D2 specifically is what I'm referring to. Um, they're capable of accidentally making a good knife every now and again. You know. It's, you know I will say this: the fit and finish from one to the next is not always the greatest. Um, hmm. And I, I yeah. know for a fact that swapping the clip on my knife from tip down to tip up meant that the tip down position was no longer an option because taking the, the screws out stripped them. Oh, so, <laughs> that's shitty. Okay, you know what? I take it, it back. It's something that ever <laughs> mattered to me because I was never going to use the knife in that position, anyways. But hmm. it's still like. Really? That's super shitty. I actually am going to rescind my compliment there. Yeah. But it was the original pillar. Maybe they corrected it since then. Like they did with the psych, you know. Corrected it by taking it off the market, yeah. Yeah. That's usually what they do, isn't it? Um, th the other one that comes to mind actually is uh, Bird. Uh, Spider Co. Yeah. produces Bird. So yeah. for Zinx in chat was saying that too. Yeah, yeah. Like as far as 8CR is concerned... I like thin blades in, eight, in 8 CR. They do perform. You just gotta sharpen them more often. And as far as hmm. Bird's build quality, it's it's worth the money. They've even got some with titanium handles. Um, some were... Oh, maybe I'm wrong on that. I, th I thought that some of them were using BD-1N at some point, or am I just thinking of the Chinese Spider Co.? Both of those things were true. I don't think either one of those things are true anymore. But, really? Oh, okay. I thought the, the... Yeah, maybe the titanium thing's still true. I'm not sure. That, that was the yeah, one I thought maybe they were still doing. But BD-1 was also true at one point in time for bird knives, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Zinx in chat is saying, bam. Um, so we've got an Emerald Lagasse in the chat, which is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> nice. Give, give another uh, squeeze on your uh, spice weasel there. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss Futurama. Yay. Um, <laughs> on to the next question. Given PNW said, uh, favorite budget knife, which I think we just answered. Yep. Um, yep. And what would you classify a budget knife as? Under 100? Under 50? Under 100. Yeah. Under 100 Canadian, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and that, and that would be 60 American or 75 American or something. Yeah. Of the yeah. Thing, right? Like it's, yeah. And I think 60 that, in this day and age, yeah. I think that fits. Because um, once you start going too far below that price point, generally speaking, you're really taking a risk with. Uh, you start sacrificing a lot of things. Build quality being the most important thing you're sacrificing. Your personal safety for your, your little fingies on the job site. <laughs> like it's just not. Yeah. It's not worth going super cheap when it comes to a tool like that. Like it's it's just downright mm -hmm. dangerous in some cases. Yeah. I've seen some fantastically bad knives come in to get cleaned up or hey, do you have screws for where like the stop pin doesn't work anymore and the lock's yeah. not really working? But they're still carrying it. That's the knife that they use and it's like you're going to lose all of your fingers, all of them. Blech. Yep. Do not want. Do not like. It's like, please, please buy this forty dollar Kershaw. I'll give you a discount. Just buy it. <laughs> <laughs> um, two that we didn't mention that we should have is probably the Cinder. As far as budget knives, the Cinder is a great little knife for twenty bucks. It's a good little knife. How about that? Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> hang on. You're calling out the Cinder that has three CR thirteen MOB. <laughs> It's twenty dollars. Name another knife for twenty dollars. It's as good. The Rook Rake little tiny keychain with twelve twenty seven. That one's twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> so I, sorry. No, I, I I agree with you. There there is better options, but I'm saying as a small little keychain knife, it's not a bad option. The Honey Bee is a uh, yeah. There you go. Right. Yep. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. I own a cinder. I own one. But still, come on. Come on. 
Okay, the what about argument for garbage knives was garbage steel, and then you throw a cinder up just to like, and I'm not supposed to call it out. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> it's just to wake you up a little bit. That. But yeah. what I'm saying is, is that I will pay twenty dollars for three CR faster than I will pay eighty or ninety dollars for eight CR. Yeah. Bang for your buck. It's a sharp little piece of metal, and I mean it's not going to hold its edge. But that first cut. You'll get a halfway through that envelope before it goes dull on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. On that note, let's go to the next question. Yeah. Um, then the next question was, ask us about handle materials. Um, and the first question is from Mr. Fisk. Is there any reason in real life you would need a wooden handle aside from looks? Need? No, G10 is going to be more stable than any wood out there, except for maybe petrified iron wood. <laughs> like, but hey, wood handles are I, cool as shit. He kind of crippled us by saying, you know, other than it, it's looks, because a wooden handle, especially depending on the wood, is bloody gorgeous. <laughs> it's not. Oh, you know what? The, the, I have a better example than this. But I, I like that this is a wood handle. But I was not out in the woods. But yeah, <clears throat> for looks specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's pretty. It's pretty. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a natural right material. Answer is use wood because it's gorgeous. <laughs> and a splash of wood with a little bit of resin, also really good combinations. I really like that juxtaposition side by side side by mm. each i actually really like benchmade's uh what's the proprietary name is it diamond wood yeah yeah mm -hmm. i am actually kind of a fan of the way the diamond wood looks um mm -hmm. just that slightly holographic two two to three tone look like it, it's kind of slick you need better wood in your life joe I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Even as far as like uh, resin impregnated wood on the Benchmade Spectrum, mm -hmm. I, I don't mind that. That is some nice wood, Diamond. though, Dennis. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Diamond wood. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They they fake it okay, but it's nothing to call out about in the wood category. Like it's yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Joe's ebony coca bolo over there. Yeah. Well, and then his, his shun knife that he showed up too. Like every single knife, he's just like, look at this wood that's turned black in my hands. So, <laughs> hey, the, the the Bark River is actually held up pretty good. Oh, and I haven't had a chance to use it yet, but the. Uh, so he hasn't used it. The ironwood from the uh, shun here. Yep. I do yeah, like I don't it. Know, for, me, for me, it's not so much a. Well, no, I like that. I'm just trying to answer the question still. Um, for me, it's not so much you necessarily need any handle material. It's just personal preference. Yeah. Sort of thing. Because, like, for as much as I pounded on this guy and abused it, like, this wood is not going anywhere. And I don't need G10 on this or my card for it to be more durable. This is plenty yeah, for durable. It to be better. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So it's, yeah, it's not a need. But for potentially for resource aspect of it type of idea when it comes to how pop like Coco Bolos and stuff like that, that you have to be careful of because they're becoming rarer and rarer. He has a point on the artificial simulated whatever handle material being even better ecologically, depending on the wood that you're you're picking off of it and things like I that. Mean, so hard to how say. ecologically friendly is epoxy at the end of the day? Yeah. It's probably not great for the environment. The it's, resin and then the containers yeah, that the yeah. epoxy comes in and like yeah, it's it's hard to say if that it would actually be more ecological or not. It might be like each individual piece might be more ecological in the long run because it's going to last longer theoretically than a piece of wood of these of a similar dimension. Cause it's not going to break down for ten thousand years. I don't know. I was playing devil's advocate more than anything else. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Um, it's funny because Hoosier's uh, Hoosier knife nut. Um, his question actually kind of plays into this. I like you saying his name with the S 
on the <laughs> Hoosier and iPad? No, Hoosiers. You <laughs> Hoosiers. <laughs> Well, hush you. Um, <laughs> why is my card of the best? Because it is. It's it's yeah. it, as far as a material that is not going to change shape. It's not going to come apart. It holds up to the abuse like anything else would. Mm -hmm. And it's feel in hand. It's top three for sure yeah. i would say yeah i'm a big fan of my car to myself it's super durable i like how it kind of takes the oils and stuff from your hand and makes its own patina and stuff it's just really nice material most definitely i have i'm pretty sure only one exact knife that uses my carta um theoretically i like it a lot um, just for the same reasons that these guys are saying. It's super stable, pretty grippy, there's a lot you can do with it. Um, uh, between it and G10, I mean, for me, it's kind of like flip a coin. Uh, I guess it depends more on the design of the knife more than anything else. Uh, it's the best because it's versatile. Like, you can polish it out, make it look super snappy and snazzy. Uh, Dennis has a couple of his collection, I think, from Bark River that are polished micarta oh yeah and a bench made too it, it takes on oils it changes color it looks aged it, it's cool um well and and the patina is what i was gonna say more than anything else on top of the indestructible factor mm -hmm. i mean like it, micarta has been used in so many crazy applications throughout the years and it's just it's proven its versatility like joe was saying right yeah. in in every application from space shuttle shit to whatever electronics to whatever else right um but i love the way that it patinas if you look like at what a proper should look like um it's not this color it's definitely no, no. Not color. <laughs> it's not that that level of polish either like that has a shine to it that the original out of the box doesn't have um so just because of the way that mm, I, I patina my carta in particular. I love the way it looks. It, it has this personalized, like you look at my Azula, same thing, right? Like yeah. Just, yeah. yeah, it's mine. You can tell. So it's gonna say Indeed. for the for the record, that's my only micarta knife. It's this little rigid dagger. I'm pretty sure this is my only one. I'm pretty sure that's just black wood that uh, Joe can't <laughs> long again. No, it's no, just... you can see the grain, or not, not the grain. Sorry, the, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, fa you can't see the grain. The fabric, <laughs> the fabric weave. Yeah, bastards. <laughs> um, it's funny that all kind of plays into Sheepdog's next question, which was G10 or Micarta, which do you prefer and why? And I think Joe already answered it. And I'm pretty yeah. sure we all would agree that, like, for all the reasons why we like micarta, G10 is a fantastic material for a knife. But if I had the choice between a G10 version and a micarta version, I'm almost always going to go with the micarta version. Yeah. Uh, main reason for me is I don't necessarily have the driest of hands, and micarta kind of absorbs that moisture, whereas G10 doesn't. It, it's more slippy for me. So I'll yeah. lean towards my carta. Most definitely. Um, this is completely off, well, on topic, but off topic. Did Dennis have an um, answer on that one? I did have an answer on that one. Yeah, yeah, I'm for not, sure. I'm not leaving the question. So. <laughs> what was that? I said, I'm not leaving the question. I was just oh, gonna it give sounded it like you were. No, no, right. no. Just answering it myself. Um, <laughs> Alex Steele recently had a video up where he was um, working on his power hammer. And the coolest thing about micarta for me is the fact that the gear tooth that was the gear that sat on the power hammer between the 15 horsepower motor and the 200 pound um, ram on this friggin' uh, power hammer was a micarta gear. Because mm -hmm. it was strong enough to do the job, but if something did go wrong, it was the weak point. It was the place where it was like, the built-in breakpoint designed so to fail. Damage, yeah. yeah, you don't damage the hammer, you don't damage the motor, but cool. it's fabric and resin 
and it's strong enough to handle the load of a 15 horsepower motor is pretty friggin' crazy in my opinion. Indeed. When I think for me, um, like the versatility, like Joe was mentioning, the high polished and the really rough, and especially the really rough, you give me really rough G10, and even just the aesthetics, let alone the grip of it, compared to really rough micarta. And there's something about just like open, rough micarta that just is kind of awesome. And open, yeah, rough G10 is like, uh, thanks, Cold Steel. Like, it's <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, like I love how uh, Chris Reeves does it for the. Um... The Green Beret? Yes. Thank or you. The yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. I, yeah. I think yeah, I have a yeah. suspicion that they like kind of like a bead blast or use like a walnut shell and take away some of the resin from the outer surface and expose the weave a little bit more. I think mm -hmm. that's about the only way you can do that because mm -hmm. for again, those of you not familiar with the Green Beret, it's 3D machine handles, like some crazy good contouring. But the 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 weave of the micarta is actually tangibly physically there alongside the machining marks it's a mm -hmm. really cool thing to look at and it's such a detail that i don't know you would necessarily notice if you're either not a knife guy or not texturally inclined that way but like it's really cool um yeah i can't think of another company that's doing my car really inclined yeah yeah, yeah. Right. well yeah, no, i get that yeah. <laughs> more like yes. that there's not, no. well there's so many people who the just first thing that i did when i picked up that you PM2 with the kind of weave on the handle is I just stood there stroking it because it felt that nice. Like it, and, and I agree that that's probably yeah, the, yeah. that's the PM2. That if I buy a PM2, it's gonna be those handles. Well, uh, I recently sent a photo to our group chat of a um, what was it, a V10 or 10V um, paramilitary. With my Carta handles, those my Carta handles make that military uh, paramilitary something that's like, all right, that's more than just a working knife. Like that's mm -hmm. it's not a bad looking handle at least. The blade still leaves a little bit to be desired visually, but <laughs> as far as those handle scales, um, they might have been the nicest ones I've seen, mm. and I think yeah. it would be specifically because of the my Carta. Um. The other thing I wanted to touch on too was with the Chris Reeves Green Beret and how like fluffed up that my card is. I think they do that specifically um, for guys like you, Nigel, that have those moist hands or are, say, mm -hmm. on deployment and your hands are, you know, you're in a freaking dogfight. Your hands yeah. might be a little sweaty. A um, little extra adrenaline I think, going. I think. Uh... Chris Reeve does that on all his fixed blades, though, too, because that uh, it's like a five inch one that has the skeletonized or not skeletonized, sorry, the on laid handles that mm. you can get either in the uh, Warren Cliff or yeah. the drop point as well. Nalaka, but I, I think that's is that right? Nalaka? The Nalaka? There, there was a Spyderco Nalaka. I don't know about a Chris Reeve Nalaka. And it's anyway, it's a, a fixed blade that he makes as well that I'm a really big fan of. But I think the Micarta is super coarse on that too. So I think it's just how he does his fixed bladed scales. Those are general it's not the wrong answer either way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and on that note, given PNW wants to know carbon, they actually said carbon fiber here. They they actually <laughs> yeah. awesome. brewer. Uh, so I kind of want to have two questions. Uh, peel ply. Why does it suck, and should we get rid of it? Um, and carbon carbon fiber versus micarta. Which would you choose? Depends on the knife for which one I would choose, because that comes down to the looks, I think. Mm -hmm. And then peel ply is horrible. I don't like it. It's just a sticker. <laughs> I don't know why it exists. <laughs> it's because of people fun. like me. Because <laughs> I'm a sucker for the appearance, and I honestly don't really care if the whole handle is carbon fiber or not. I, I do was going to say, in that respect, it makes sense. It, it kept that knife's cost down from what it could have been in a full carbon fiber or something else. Keep in mind as well, if there was a version that was like sculpted marbled carbon fiber, 
I'd go for that in a heartbeat over this. Even if it was 50 or $60 more expensive, uh, yeah, I'd probably do that. But So are you saying that carbon fiber trumps my car there, Joe? No, I just think that uh, uh, this composite carbon fiber G10, I think there's a place for it in the knife community. I just don't think that it's really going to appeal to collectors all that much um, mm -hmm. or people who are considered about material value per dollar um it's not the best approach for sure there's a reason probably why only spiderco and kershaw are doing it right now uh oh okay no that's not true sadivi did did, a, did recently do a couple models with it as well um i'm gonna i'm gonna say pretty much what nigel did um it's gonna depend on the knife <laughs> uh, I, overall, I like carbon fiber more uh, for its appearance. But if I want like a hard use outdoor fixed blade, I'm no, I'm, I'm probably not going to take the carbon fiber unless it's got like enough hey, grip to hey, it. Hey Joe, hey, hey Joe, could you just mute yourself? No. <laughs> <laughs> could you ramble for another five minutes just to agree with someone else? <laughs> just to be like, I'm going to give what Nigel said for an answer. Yeah, pretty much. Just visual. I like my current man. I know yeah. I'm a sucker for carbon fiber if you look at my collection, but the pocket knife collection. But when's the last time you saw a knife with a micarta handle and been like, no, that's no good? I wish it was this instead. Very rarely. I'm trying and to where think. I, I feel like there, there is some, there is some carbon fiber stuff that I've seen that I'm like, I would have preferred a full TI version or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, when it comes to micarta for me, it's usually something where I'm looking at a knife and going, if I was to replace these scales, what would I replace it with? And that answer is almost always micarta because you find a set of micarta scales for something and they just, yeah. the scales by themselves look good. They don't need to be even be on a, a nice looking knife. You know what I mean? Pretty much the only yeah. way I'll take the, like I said, it depends on the knife, but that's like, is it a gentlemanly suit knife, wedding knife, dress up sort of one? Yeah. Carbon fiber all day on that sort of stuff. Flappy as hell, yeah. Yeah. Although I will say, and I was just thinking about that, a perfect example of favorite handle materials is that new, it was that Blade HQ exclusive called the Dapper that had the carbon fiber, the titanium, and the micarta handle. Right, right. Yeah, right. For a little clip point flipper thing that I sent to the group that I was all jazzed up about. But yeah. out of those three options, which handle would you take? And it is a smaller gentlemanly knife as well. Yeah, car, uh, for me, car, carbon carbon fiber. I'm a slut for carbon fiber in a folder. That's <laughs> well, yeah. I know we talked about it in the group chat, and you said carbon fiber, and me and Paul both were instantly my cartas looked sexy as hell. Yeah, yeah. I honestly don't remember it enough for my answer. Okay, uh, yeah. The response, the, um, yeah. I'd have to go back and look at it again. W w without getting too ranty into it, uh, generally speaking, if it's a folder, I want carbon fiber. If it's a fixed blade, I'm going to lean more towards my carta, but yeah. yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, and the only reason the full TI version of the Dapper didn't win is because it wasn't a frame lock. They did two titanium slabs and then put, still put a steel liner in, which I think is stupid. If you're going to do titanium, yeah. just make it a frame lock. Like so. Really? Oh, fair enough. I, I'll take frame lock all day over a liner any day of the week. Especially if it's I, titanium. Why would you waste your time with like two slabs of titanium and not frame lock it and put a steel? Like it's what about a stainless steel uh, frame lock insert? Like what Kershaw does with the uh, Jesus, Ooh. the bare knuckle and the yeah. That's fine. Yeah, um, they do. A, much, well, that's like a subframe. I'm okay with that too. Like yeah. it's yeah. Pretty much I my only like, like a devil's advocate sort of response to that, Dennis, is the aesthetics of it is you make it a frame lock and it changes the size and it might ruin the design of the designer's mind sort of thing. If you did full TI on either side, it's nice and clean. Exactly, yeah. So that's yeah, yeah. like the only argument I could see. And I have to agree because I still like the way my crossbones looks more than I like the, uh, the T04 from Voking. I, wrong, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I like the symmetry. I like the fact that there's a liner inset. Uh, I deal with the frame lock because it's there. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Um, you the you can like it all you want, but Paul's right in the. Uh, <laughs> of your yeah, yeah. 
just for the record, that might be the first time I've ever heard say, Dennis say that I'm right. On on camera. Camera. See, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the thing I wanted to say about peel ply is if you use peel ply and you use like a CNC to cut through it and use it as a feature where there's carbon fiber and you can see the G10 layering, um, I think I like that better than just a slab of, no, no, it's carbon fiber. Trust us. I yeah, think, you know I agree. I, mean? I think there's room I, for that. Yeah, there's the, the deception level of it. Yeah. I like well, the fact still that still is a deception it. level. Still to this day, they call it CF laminate. Like, yeah. that's a pretty vague description on what that actually is, right? Like, is yeah. it? I don't know. They I do agree. CF laminate. No, they do CF laminate and they do peel ply. They do both. Oh. One of them really Gail does. Brad a Gail Bradley is a <laughs> okay. CF laminate. Okay, so the, the Gail Bradley is a CF laminate, and then this is a what? A peel ply? A peel ply, I believe. And things like the Akuchi, that's open weaved okay. CF and stuff, is the peel ply, I believe. Okay. Interesting. Huh. Um, when it comes to the smock specifically, the holes that are cut into it, they're chamfered, right? You can see the black G10 underneath it. Uh, they sure are. Same thing with the grip area for yeah. your index so, finger. You can like tell. Like that kind of thing, but... like, as a feature. Uh, what's the one that we, we have on the shelf right now from Kershaw with the carbon fiber or the assist? Um, I know the one you're the talking knockout? about. The, no, no, no. The, it's not the knockout. The big boy. It's on the, the second shelf. 8CR. The, the flourish. The two-tone blade? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the flourish. Oh, wait, two-tone. Flourish, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not two-tone. Um, no, it's, it's called the flourish. It's... Yeah, that knife. <laughs> Um, the way they've cut through the carbon fiber on that one to show off the G10 as well. If I'm if I'm thinking of the right knife, I think I'm thinking about the right knife. I hope I am. Otherwise, this this topic makes no sense at all. Um, but they they no maybe I'm wrong. The flourish. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm just, hey, hey Joe, do you want to mute Paul? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I realized halfway through that, that I'm not sure if it's the two tone. This one? Blade? Yes. Is it two-tone, or is, is it, it all carbon fiber? It is. I didn't think it was two-tone, because it actually has a... Uh, oh, Jesus, this is terrible. Anyway, it has a, um, a kind of a fuller that has a dark, like, stonewash-y kind of stuff in the center. But then you can see the mm -hmm. flats are uh, satin. But the, yeah. the carbon fiber... The chamfers are black and the carbon fiber is in the center, right? Yeah. Yes. There you go. I'm not crazy. I like that look where they cut through it. They show the fact that it's not actually carbon fiber. Instead of just like perfectly square edges where you don't, you can't really tell unless you're like looking at your knife and well, John, you know what I mean? What, what you're saying is we went through all of that for you to talk about the exact thing that the smock has on it. <laughs> well, shut up. <laughs> in Paul's so on it, that note, it, it, I think it's time for a break. <laughs> it is time for a break. <laughs> the plan was I was trying to get us to our break. <laughs> well, we got there, so when when we get back from our break, we've got poll questions to get to. Yep, prick. Wonderful. <laughs> Everyone out there in YouTube land, hang on for a few moments. We're going to refresh our drinks and empty our bladders and all that sort of stuff. See you we soon. will be back shortly with you.